What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? That's not my intro, but we're going to roll with it anyway. We're back with another realistic rebuild, and I'd like to address something really quickly before we actually get into this realistic rebuild. Uh, and one, I saw in the comment section of my last video a little bit that, uh, like, there were a lot of fun comments from people that don't usually comment. Like, uh, I believe one of them was a classic. Emotionless fuck. That one was, uh, that one was pretty great. Uh, also, it's a, a bangle. I think you would be better versed if you used more emotion when you talk. It's like, I'm not out here, like, Hello, New England Patriots, Tom Brady. Like, the words aren't coming out of my mouth like fucking diarrhea. I'm out here like I live in a dorm, I have roommates, it's called being courteous. I'm not gonna just scream, but they're gone now, so maybe I can get out here and be like, WHAT'S GOING ON GUYS?! Like every other fucking YouTuber on here. Um, is that a rant? I don't know, it was pretty short. We got the Patriots, and I'm considering whether I want to do this without Tom Brady. Um, the first year, or not, not the first year, but let him go through, like, turn his age as far as he goes, and then just take over the Patriots without Tom Brady for year two, three, four, you know, and beyond, however long this video goes. So I think I might actually do that. We got Gronk, we got Julian Edelman. There are a number of players that are just too old for my liking here, but, um, in these realistic style rebuilds, there's nothing really I can do about that. We don't do a lot of trades, if any at all. It's a lot of, you know, signing mid-tier free agents and just using draft picks effectively to build the team. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so here is the team. We got Tom Brady. I think it's notable. I don't usually mention the backup quarterback, but Jimmy Garoppolo uh, could be our guy. Wide receiver core is pretty good. You got Julian Edelman, Danny Amendola, Brandon Cooks, Chris Hogan. Of course, they traded for Philip Dorsett from the Colts. Malcolm Mitchell still on the team. Danny Amendola and Julian Edelman are going to be off the team really soon with Danny Amendola being 31 years old and Julian Edelman being 30, 31 as well. Okay, Brandon Cooks is someone to build around. Same thing with Gronk. Dwayne Allen can stay, but I'm not really sure what we're going to do with him considering that um, even though he is only 27, we you know, backup tight ends don't really matter in Madden simulation. That's all we care about for this. Nate Solder, Joe Tooney, David Andrews, Shaq Mason, Marcus Cannon. It's a decent offensive line. Nate Solder is getting up into his 30s um, pretty soon. Joe Tooney's a young player. He's fine. He's only 24. Shaq Mason, same deal. Marcus Cannon's probably coming up pretty close to 30 as well. Yeah, he's 29, just like Nate Solder is. On the defensive side of the ball, we have Devin McCourty, who also getting older. He's 29. He's 30. Okay, I'm, I'm off on my years so far. But we have Deron Harmon. I don't really think he's the future. Patrick Chung certainly is not. But we do have a young building piece in Dante Hightower. He's probably like 26, 27. He's 27 years old. Uh, probably not going to re-up Shea McClellan's contract. David Harris, if you guys remember the old meme on my channel with the youngest player in the league. Uh, you know, flip the three around. And two, he's 30 or 23, best young player in the league. It's whatever. He's 33 now, so I can't do that, which kind of sucks. Uh, in the secondary, we have Malcolm Butler, Eric Rowe, Stefan Gilmore. Uh, it's decent. Could be better, of course. And then on the defensive line, Trey Flowers, Malcolm Brown, Hook'em Horns, Alan Branch, Lawrence Guy, Vincent Valentine as well. It's an interesting team. Like, it isn't really anything special. Uh, the main specialty that the Patriots have is Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And if we're not using Tom Brady, and of course, Bill Belichick isn't the coach anymore, I've taken over. Like, what do these Patriots really have? But uh, regardless, I think what we're going to go ahead and do to ensure that Tom Brady retires after this season is go ahead, and this is just for the sake of the video. We're going to make... Can I not? It's four. I can't... I literally can't make it older than 40. Okay. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. You know. All right. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the simulation. I'll simulate to the end of season number one and we start in the off season. All right. So we did not even make the playoffs. Finished nine and seven. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. Let's check out the stats, see how this team ended up going nine and seven. We were first in the NFL and... In your offensive yards, we didn't even make the playoffs. Tom Brady threw for over 5,000 yards. Okay, Tom. <laughs> Calm down at age 40. 5,100 yards for him. 38 touchdowns, 10 interceptions is a little bit higher than I would like. Deion Lewis actually had a really, really, really good season. Oh, my God. Averaged 4.2 yards per carry with 20 touchdowns. Mike Gillisley also had 11 touchdowns. That's insane. 1,100 yards for Deion Lewis. Julian Edelman. Had over 100 catches for 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns. Gronk had 100 catches for almost 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns. Cooks, 
Nine touchdowns. Danny Amendola almost had a thousand yards. I don't want to. I don't want to lose Brady. Quarterback sacks. Nate Solder let up a decent amount, but those are we screwed in simulation. David Harris led our team in tackles with 139 tackles for loss. Nine from Lawrence Guy. Quarterback sacks. Seven from Dante Hightower. Four and a half for Trey Flowers. Interceptions. Six for Malcolm Butler. Two for both Devin McCourty and Patrick Chung. Our two starting safeties. Force fumbles. I see three from Shane McClellan, Lawrence Guy, and Eric Rowe. Fumble recoveries is three from Lawrence Guy, two from Shane McClellan, two from Trey Flowers. Any defensive touchdowns? One from Malcolm Butler. Okay. Yearly awards. Aaron Rodgers wins MVP of the 10 and 6 Packers. Tom Brady in there at number three. Surprised we don't see Deion Lewis here. Maybe for Offensive Player of the Year, he's in there. He is number eight. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Justin Houston. Any Patriots know? Offensive Rookie of the Year, Deshaun Watson. Any Patriots know? Defensive Rookie of the Year, Carl Lawson of the Bengals. And still, no Patriots. That's okay. We have a ton of coach XP. I'm not really sure how I got that much. I'm not complaining, though. But uh, Malcolm Butler is ready to negotiate his deal. I would like to bring him back. He's still fairly young at 28. Like, he is getting there, but um, I think it's good enough to bring him back on a two- or three-year deal. He wants a two-year deal. I can offer you... I can offer you... Uh, let's do let's do 11 overall per year. But he wants to play on a new team. Okay. Deion Lewis, 27. I know he had a really good season. So it's going to be like pretty annoying for people if I don't bring him back. So I'm going to. Although I don't want to pay him this much. But we're going to give him that deal. 3.2 per year. And of course, bring back Jimmy Garoppolo. He has quick development. I don't know how he got that. Maybe he already had it. But uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, it's very important that we keep him for long term. Um, so I will offer him a sizable deal to be the understudy for Tom Brady. He does accept. And then the rest, I am perfectly fine with letting walk. About $43 million in cap room. Don't really plan on getting anybody. Although, I'm pretty much out on Malcolm Butler since he declined. He, wanted, he said he wanted to play for a new team. So we're going to respect that. Timmy Jernigan, however... I think it come in and be extremely useful. No real interest in Terrence West, but I do kind of want a new running back. I'm going to offer on Timmy Jernigan. He's young. He's good. If we can get him for under eight a year, that'd be fantastic. All right, Timmy Jernigan rejected our contract. Fantastic. That actually kind of sucks. It's just in these realistic rebuilds, the regression hits so hard, as you can see from guys like Marcus Cannon. Um, although Tom Brady just never seems to regress. He's still so good. Yeah, getting older, stiff arm, whatever. Still Tom Brady, isn't it? Okay, I just realized I made a uh, lapse in judgment. I didn't realize to where I simulated to. We did make the playoffs. In fact, we went so far in the playoffs that we made the Super Bowl where we lost to the Packers by a touchdown. I thought I simulated at the start of the playoffs. We actually made the Super Bowl after beating the Bengals, Chiefs, and Bills in um, the Wild Card Divisional and Conference Championship. So we have the 31st pick in the first, second, third, and fourth, etc. rounds. But uh, that was a lapse in judgment. I didn't realize. I made a mistake. But all right, Super Bowl year one, didn't win it. Came pretty damn close. So here we are in the draft. We have the 31st pick, and I'm ready to jump right into it. Let's find a player. See, the trouble with picking so far back in the first round is all the top-tier talent is pretty much gone, but I think I found a player I'm happy with selecting. That's going to be Gilbert Smith, an outside linebacker out of Ole Miss. I think he's going to be a decent player. Here we go. Okay, slow development. That is extremely unfortunate. 83 speed, 81 finesse move, 85 power move, 88 block shed is is really, really good. He's ranked number 39. We took him at 31. That slow development is a killer, though. That's a tough first pick, despite him being a really good player. But slow development's going to hold him back quite a lot. I don't want to take the risk of this guy falling, so I'm going to take him here in the second round. Um, Matt Farr out of Princeton, an Ivy League school. You know, he's got the intelligence, but he's also got the athletic profile. 4 5 3, 40 is insanely fast. Insane broad, vert, extremely agile and quick with the three cone, the 20 yard shuttle, and he's strong with the bench press. His top three skills are also amazing. Here we go, Matt Farr. That makes up for it. We picked at 31 uh, in the first time. Now we're picking at 
63, and we take 31st best in the entire draft. 78 overall, quick development, 86 speed, 89 tackle, 86 block shit, 89 hit power, 80 pursuit. One hell of a middle linebacker there. I'm going to go ahead and trade this pick down, though, in typical Patriots fashion, and that's honestly what I should have done with my first pick. And uh, the only team offering a third is going to be Colts, so I will accept that offer. Just looking to move as far up in the draft as I can uh, for next year. I'm going to trade down this fifth round pick as well, and there are thirds being offered next year. Uh, the worst team will probably be the Saints without Drew Brees. So I will go ahead and accept that offer from the Saints, provided they didn't draft a stud rookie quarterback. And then it's really not even taking a gamble at this point, because it is the sixth round, but I'm going to take Brian Wagner, um, a right guard out of Bethune, Cookman. I don't really know much about him, but I know his combat grade was pretty good. And he is pretty good. 66 overall in the entire draft. We took him at 174, 88 strength, 86 run block, 76 pass block, 86 impact blocking. Really solid player there. And uh, I think I have one more player that I'd like to grab. And he's supposed to go in the seventh round. So I should be able to snag him pretty easily here late in the sixth. Willie Shields out of Syracuse. Another uh, Northeastern school for the middle linebacker. Like, of course, Princeton is in New Jersey. Syracuse is in New York. Looks like a pretty good player. Decent combine, good top three skills. I'll take him. And that is a pretty good pick as well. Willie Shields out of Syracuse, 78 overall. Quick development, 85 speed, 88 tackle, 85 block shot, 85 hit power, 83 pursuit. 33 in the entire draft. We took him at 191. I am the best drafter out of anyone who does anything like this on YouTube. It's not even close. Get at me. And with this pick, we're just going to take this kid out of uh, Army. He doesn't look anything special, but, like, he can jump okay. He's kind of strong, kind of fast. It's a seventh-round pick. Yeah, I mean, like, he really actually isn't all that bad. You get awareness, route running, and spectacular catch-up. He's actually not a terrible player, but, it, you know, it's a seventh round. Second-to-last pick in the draft. You can't really expect all that much. Okay, since Tom Brady just doesn't want to retire, I'm not going to cut him, obviously. So this, you know, realistic rebuild is just going to go, like, more years than I initially intended. So I'm going to upgrade the team and uh, figure out where everyone fits. I need to find a spot for Wagner, and I think his spot is going to be left tackle. I've also changed to a 3-4 to get my identical-looking quick development middle linebacker rookies on the field at the same time. We're also going to play our drafted rookie Gilbert Smith at right outside linebacker. So, I mean, hopefully these guys can play okay. I hope they should be able to. I haven't really upgraded anyone much at all yet, except for Brandon Cooks. All right, so this is the new look team. Uh, of course, no Danny Amendola. Chris Hogan's going to play this slot, which I don't really like. He's not a slot receiver, so Julian Edelman's going to play the slot. Um, you know, nothing too different other than just a few minor upgrades here and there. Um, Wagner is, of course, starting at left tackle now. Defensively, Got a bunch of rookies out there. I don't want Patrick Chung playing. So Deron Harmon is going to be our new starting strong safety. But other than that, I will see you guys at the end of the season. We're going to simulate straight there. All right, so we made the playoffs again going 10-6. and six. We'll see how we got there. Won the division, though, which is something new, as we did last year. Tom Brady still throwing for a ridiculous number of yards, 4,719. 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, very similar numbers in that department. Uh, Deion Lewis, 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns. Mike Gillisley, 14 touchdowns as the backup. Brandon Cooks, under 100 catches with 1,200 yards, 3 touchdowns. 12 touchdowns for Julian Edelman on 1,100 yards. 878 yards for Rob Gronkowski on 91 catches, 8 touchdowns for him as well. Blocking, decent amount of sacks allowed from Brian Wagner, but those numbers are kind of skewed anyway. Matt Farr, a rookie letter team in tackles with 131. Will Shields, uh, Willie Shields, in second with 107. Tackles for loss, 8 from Trey Flowers, 8 from Lawrence Guy. Quarterback sacks, we have 12.5 from Trey Flowers, 5.5 from Malcolm Brown, 5 from Dante Hightower. Interceptions, 5 for Patrick Chung and Stefan Gilmore. Forced fumbles, we have 2 from Willie Shields at the team, who also had a fumble recovery. Only 3 fumble recoveries in total. And I see one defensive touchdown. It is Stefan Gilmore. Show me awards. Aaron Rodgers, league MVP for the second year in a row. Tom Brady at 7. AFC Office Player of the Year goes to Leonard Fournette, who was a 99 after his first year, like, every single time. Tom Brady at number four. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Wesley Woodyard. No Patriots. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Jordan Strong. 
No Patriots. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Avery Hendricks. No. Over Matt Farr and Willie Shields and Gilbert Smith. That is so frustrating. This is the team for the first round of the playoffs. We are in the wild card versus the Indianapolis Colts. This reminds me of, like, you know, those mid 2000s Peyton Manning versus Tom Brady matchups. But we do advance to the next round of the playoffs here, and that is the divisional at Nissan Stadium in Tennessee versus the 11 and 5 Tennessee Titans to make it to the conference championship. And do we make it? We do. And it looks like we might be heading to Arrowhead. No, this is actually at Gillette. Okay. The 10 and 6 Chiefs versus the 10 and 6 Patriots to advance to the Super Bowl. Do we make it? I don't know. No? I don't think I don't think so. Nope. Chiefs at Seahawks is going to be the Super Bowl. So this time we do uh one less game than we had last year in the playoffs. Unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. I know it sounds kind of funny. I really hope Tom Brady retires so I can work with somebody else, work around Jimmy Garoppolo. And Tom Brady has indeed retired. A legend is gone forever. He's not dead, but I mean, like, he's off the team. Brandon Cooks is the future. Shaq Mason is the future. Trey Flowers, Malcolm Brown, they're all the future. I need them all back. I'd even take back Chris Hogan. Ah, 30. Ugh. I don't know if I would take him back, actually. <laughs> all right, so I re-signed those four players that we talked about. I'm going to let Chris Hogan walk. I'm going to let James Devlin walk uh, on the defensive side of the ball. I think Lawrence Guy might have been a free agent. I really don't have a vested interest in re-signing him. I'm trying to get the XP situation up from Gilbert Smith to get him to at least normal development so we can start to work with him in the future. But let's go ahead and see what talent is available in free agency. Got 50 mil to spend. I'm extremely interested in this. Earl Thomas, he is 30 years old, hook him horns by the way. My second favorite player in the league. He's still very good for a 30 year old. We do have Devin McCourty. I would play one of these guys at strong safety despite both like having the prototype free safety build. I'm super, super interested in Earl Thomas though. I would love to sign him. Okay, so I went after Ronald Darby and Dante Fowler Jr. as well. Both rejected. However, we did sign Earl Thomas, which I think that's a massive, massive signing. An issue I'd really like to address though is the cornerback position. But uh, we're going to move Earl Thomas over to that strong side. Hopefully he plays well over there. I'm sure he will. It's Earl Thomas. But, you know, the corner, the cornerback trio of Stefan Gilmore, Cyrus Jones, and Corn Elder is not exactly going to work for me. Yeah, I can't believe his name's Corn, former Miami player. Wild. Whatever. Um, this is the team that we have right now. His name is John Hancock. Like, I want him. I can't. I've got Jimmy G. This player is going to be insane, though. All right, so I'd be very intrigued to see if the Dolphins go ahead and take that quarterback, and they don't. The Redskins, I don't think, would, but they do. guess they're moving on from Kirk Cousins. Let's go ahead and advance to our pick here at 30, 29, I guess, and hopefully there are some players here that I'd like to draft. I think it's a pretty good draft class, so I should be able to grab some studs in typical Patriots fashion, either at the top or later in the draft. And with my first pick, I'm taking Keldrick Hill out of LSU. There are a number of good players out there. I think he fits the best for us right now, considering that we really do need a cornerback. Keldrick Hill, welcome to the team. 80 overall, quick development. He's ranked number 15 in the draft. We took him at 29. 93 speed, 80 man, 85 zone, 88 press. Quality player. A number of my players shot off the board. I'm going to trade for a second rounder next year. A uh, third would have been nice too, but I don't think that's on the table. Let's do this with the Bengals to acquire... Uh, a third this year and a second next year. With this pick, I am taking a defensive tackle out of BC. He looks fantastic. Great top three skills with B plus pursuit, B plus, uh, B plus power move, B minus block shed. He's incredibly fast, decently strong, very, very quick. I plan on playing him at 3 4 defensive end. He's 6 1, 286, so he's a little bit small to play defensive tackle, but I think he works really, really well as a 3 4 end. Here we go, JC Calhoun. 73 overall, quick development. He's ranked number 62 in the draft. We take him at 81. That quick development is going to be really useful as well. 81 block shed, 86 power moves at 78 speed, 79 strength. Pretty good player. With this pick, I'm taking a chance at a guard. And I'm going with Ross Boenko out of Southern Utah. Another gamble 
at a uh, at an offensive lineman. But his combine was fantastic. I think with that speed, agility, and strength, he's going to be a player that has to be pretty decent at least. And he is a 77 overall, ranked number 34 in the draft. We did him at 85, 91 strength, 86 run block, 75 pass block, and 86 impact blocking. But the curse strikes again of another slow development player. He's really good, though. Let's go ahead and trade this pick down. Oh, second rounder next year. I'm in. Bucks, there you go. Falcons are offering a second round next year. So are the Seahawks. I'm going to take the Seahawks. It's a lower projected pick. So hopefully it is. Or higher, I guess you could say. With this pick in the fourth round, I'm taking Walker Zombo, a cornerback out of Temple. Really good top three skills. I'm banking on the fact that he's a really talented uh, fifth round pick. But we're taking him in the fourth. And he is. We back at it. Fuck slow development. Fuck 73 overall. We're out here taking fifth round projected talents. And they're actually number 23 in the entire draft, taking them at 125, 91 speed, 88 man, 80 zone, 85 press. Superstar development for the 21-year-old. What a sick pick. Trading this pick down for a third rounder next year. We'll do it with the Saints. And then I think my sixth round pick is going to be an absolute banger if he's still on the board, which I really hope he is because he looks like a really quality player. You guys might have caught a glimpse of him earlier. It's Alan Bowens out of Indiana State. Another player that looks absolutely insane, and he's projected to go mid-seventh. B-plus finesse move, B-plus head power, B-pursuit. Good combine. He's incredibly fast at 4, 6, 7 speed, flying off the edge as a pass rusher. Really quick with his, with his three-cone 20-yard shuttle. Strong with the bench press. Here he is. Number 46 in the draft. We took him at 189. Quick development on him. 82 speed, 89 finesse move is fantastic. 80 block shit, 87 hit power. 76 power moves, 84 pursuit. Another really solid draft for us. And uh, I'm happy with a lot of these players who are going to get some opportunities to play. So this is the team. Derek Rivers is starting at right outside linebacker right now. However, I have added him to the trade block as I have with uh, Gilbert Smith as well. He does have slow development, which is not going to be that valuable to a lot of teams. But we're going to see how this team plays. I just want to get a lot of these rookies involved with the development traits that we look for, like Bowens, who has, or Bowens, who has quick development, like J.C. Calhoun, who has quick development. So I need to make spots for them on the team, and I'm not going to cut Dante Hightower. Like, some of these guys have to stay out there. So I think using the trade block and not actually trading these players away uh, the way I usually might, just letting the game make offers is the best way to do it. And I'm going to simulate to the next week, see what some of those offers might be. So we don't have any trade offers on Gilbert Smith, which is unfortunate. I think that's likely... Oh, was he not even on the trade block? All right, shit. Let's see, Let's see what uh, offers we have for Derek Rivers. Very young, decently high overall. We should get some good picks, and we do. A 2, a 5, and a 5 from the Saints, as well as a 2 and a 7 from the Carolina Panthers, or a 3 from the Bills. I'm going to go ahead and accept this trade from the Saints. That's a 2021, though. I'm okay with it. Yeah, no one has any interest in Gilbert Smith. I was using his XP to get his development up, but it's it's gone up it's even more points now. So I'm just going to spend it uh, on awareness and play rec and things like that to get his overall up so the teams might actually be interested in him because he's not a bad player. He goes up to an 82 overall, which is going to increase his value, and hopefully some team now will take a chance on him. All right, we got trade offers for him. Very young. Hopefully there are some offers. I'm not getting Jay Prosh. But there are some... Oh, Tariq Cohen? That does interest me. I'm going to take this with the Chiefs, though. I think a second round this year is too much to pass up. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that from the Kansas City Chiefs. This will be the team for season number three. Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy G is our new starting quarterback for the first time in his career. On the defensive side of the ball, we are playing a lot of rookies. Earl Thomas is a new fresh face on the team. He was a huge signing that we signed in the last offseason. We're relying on a bunch of rookies to come in and make plays. Hopefully, they can do just that. But I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Midseason mark, we are 6-2. and two. Okay, that's actually not bad at all. I will take that any day. Ooh, that's a lot of XP. I'm feeling this. This is a good season. We got a good season ahead of us. 
I'm gonna use some coach XP. Actually, I probably I don't. I probably can't even afford anything. I only have like the running back, wide receiver packages left to buy. But uh, I'm gonna do some small scouting. Resign Gronk. I saw, and then we should be good. All right, we gotta resign Gronk. I'll sign him to a massive deal. I don't even care. I mean, I do care, but we need Gronk on the team. He's the best tight end in football when healthy. And uh, he's gonna resign. And now we gotta think about some things. We have a number of really, really tough decisions to make regarding Julian Edelman, who is 33. Joe Tooney absolutely is coming back. Devin McCourty, who is 32 and declining rapidly. He started like, what, an 87 or 89 in this? He's down to an 83 already. Let's go ahead and if we can, if we can see his progression history, because it's not good. I mean, it doesn't show you his regression right now, but it's, it's been pretty bad. Dwayne Allen, not even a chance. Alandon Roberts, there's just no real point in keeping him. And then Malcolm Mitchell is useless. So I re-signed Joe Tooney as well as Gronk. I offered Julian Edelman a contract, but he um, he didn't like the money involved at all. Devin McCourty, I'm just not going to re-sign. I can draft a strong safety or sign a strong safety or move Earl Thomas to free safety. Like, I have a number of options. Devin McCourty, thank you for your time in New England, but um, it's your time's up. So, Julian Edelman wants so much money. I'm not willing to pay him $8 million a year. And that he just declined 7.87. And that was like kind of going over the top. A little bit of Andre Nande, Michigan State. Maybe. This will be my finer, final offer to Julian Edelman. If he doesn't accept this, I'm out. He does accept, though. It's a two-year deal. We're just going to watch him die. That's all That's all we're going to do here. You're, we're just going to watch him regress. It's going to be sad. We're 6-3, and three, though. Let's go ahead and simulate to the playoffs, see how we're doing. So we made the playoffs again, this time going 8-8. Eight and eight. We were 6-2 and two and finished 8-8. Eight and eight. That is absolutely brutal. Let's go ahead and see how we ended up going 8-8. Eight and eight. As Jimmy Garoppolo threw for almost 4,400 yards, 32 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, rushing Deion Lewis, decent season, 15 touchdowns, <laughs> pretty good. Julian Edelman, almost 100 catches, 1,200 yards, and 7 touchdowns. We're going to keep him around. Malcolm Mitchell, 8 touchdowns. Brandon Cooks, almost 1,000 yards, blocking the offensive line. is pretty insignificant. The numbers are whatever. 140 tackles from Matt Farr led our team. Tackles for loss, 15 from Malcolm Brown, 10 from Trey Flowers. Quarterback sacks, 9.5 from Trey Flowers, 7 from rookie Alan Bowens out of Indiana State. Interceptions, 3 from Farr, rookie Zombo, the zombie, 2 for Keldrick Hill, 2 for Earl Thomas, 2 for Devin McCourty. Forced fumbles, 2 for McCourty. What about defensive touchdowns? Nobody. 13th in the NFL in offensive yards. Russell Wilson takes home the MVP. Alex Smith is on the Giants. Okay. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Jimmy G at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Mustafa Bias. Almost drafted this guy. Almost did. Didn't, though. Um, Matt Farr comes in at number 9. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Lindsey Menzi. George Jones Drew of the Patriots. He's a halfback, ironically, at number six. Show me defensive rookie of the year. God damn it, Mustafa. And then Devin Villarreal. What are the Dolphins doing? Bowen's at number three. I say his name differently every time. Keldrick Hill at four. Walker Zombo at seven. JC Calhoun at nine. We just couldn't get it. Dolphins dominated. Even though they finished, I guess, one win behind us. Look at the AFC East. Eight and eight, eight and eight, seven and nine, seven and nine. Weird. Let's go ahead and upgrade some of our players. We have a decent amount of XP for some positions. Defensively, anything major. Uh, Zombo is like 20k. Bowen, same deal. All right, let's go ahead and do this. So this is the upgraded team. We're looking a little bit weak at receiver with Malcolm Mitchell as our, I guess, slot guy. Offensive lines coming along fairly nicely on the defense side of the ball. These rookies are really, well, not rookies, but our drafted players are really coming through. We look at Bowens, we look at Farr, Shields. They're all up to 84, 87, 88, respectively. Our rookie cornerbacks, Zombo and Hill, are already at 84 and 85. Defensive lines coming together, Malcolm Brown, of course, our drafted rookie, J.C. Calhoun, and Trey Flowers is one of the best and most underrated players in the league, in my opinion. But we do have the wild card playoff against the Jaguars, and I think next season will probably be our last as we lose here. 
Okay. Hopefully we can uh, finish the final season with a Super Bowl victory. That would be pretty good. Devin McCourty just keeps going down and overall, man. I got him upgraded to an 84, but he keeps getting worse in every single department by so much. Uh, I like I don't want to not I don't want to let him go, but at the same time paying him 4.65 per year, I guess overall with signing bonus factored in, is just ridiculous. And if I offer him this, I don't even know if he'd accept. Yeah, he's not interested. Like I'm not going to pay him more than that. It's just ridiculous. So uh, we'll have to look at what's there in free agency in the draft, and hopefully we can come back for a final season and just crush it. Jalen Ramsey's a free agent. I would kind of like him. Hold on, where did... Hold on a minute. Is uh, is Stefan Gilmore not on the team, or is he just regressing? He's regressing. He's, up to, he's down to an 83 overall. That's... Uh... I'd really like to sign Jalen Ramsey, but I'm I'm not going to. I think I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make an offer and bring Akib Talib back to New England on a one year deal. So I went out and I made a number of signings in Derek Henry, our new starting running back, Marcus Gilbert, new starting right tackle, and Akib Talib is back with the New England Patriots. He is going to be a very good cornerback addition to our team. Stefan Gilmore is going to move down to the four spot with the emergence of our uh, drafted players last year. We're still looking for that safety. Worst comes to worst, Deron Harmon can start at strong safety. I'll move Earl Thomas back to free, uh, which I think is going to be the plan for right now is I don't want, really want uh, Lorenzo Jerome starting at free safety. So Earl Thomas is going to be moving back to free safety. We need a really good draft again. And like all of our drafts so far have been extremely solid. But we just need to come out and get another extremely solid draft. Maybe I'm looking to address wide receiver, I think, is a big position that I could go with. But Jimmy G is our quarterback. I'm not, I can't go a different direction. So we do have the 21st pick in the draft, if I recall. Hoping the player I really would like to take does not go. Uh, and it appears as if he has not. It appears. I really want to know... The Cardinals quarterback, Kyrie Armstrong. And there's a halfback that looks really good. Is he not has he not been drafted? Hold on just a minute. Ashley Swilling. I really want to know where this guy goes. I have Derrick Henry, so there's not really a need for him, but his top three skills are great. His combine was also amazing. He's fast as hell. 445 speed at 238. This guy would be an absolute animal, but we can't take him. But I will be taking Jarek McKinnon out of Auburn. Does his name seem familiar? Jarek McKinnon, anyone? Uh, he's great, though. Really good top three skills. I'd like to see zone coverage up there. It's fine that it's not, though. He is fast, 4-4-7 speed. Great vertical, great broad jump, great three cone. Not a bad 20-yard shuttle at all. Decently strong. Hoping he's really good. And he is, he is good. 89 speed is not bad. He's ranked number 32 in the draft. We took him at 21. Zone coverage is a 71. He's definitely good enough to start at strong safety, especially considering what we have now. But he's not an insane pick by any by any means. That halfback is still on the board. Like, I'm almost tempted to grab him. Because he, like, I don't think there's any way he cannot be good. However, with this pick, I'm taking Devin Valos out of UCLA. It's just sometimes there's a player, even if you have them already at the position, and they are pretty good, as we have with a... JC, whatever his name is. The top three skills of Devin Valos are so, so good at B plus tackle, B plus hit power, B plus power move. Works so well into our 3 4 scheme currently. I assume his block shit's going to be high. His combine was amazing. He put up 40 reps of 225. He's fast enough. Here he is. 78 overall. He's ranked number 25 in the draft. 82 block shed is what that ended up being. 92 strength, 86 tackle, 86 power move, 77 speed, 80 excel. This is a really, really good player. I'm just not really sure what we do with him. I was hoping he'd be like an 80 or something, something insane, but he was not. Two consecutive picks now, and I'm so tempted to go Ashley Swilling. We might as well. I want to see how good this guy is. Ashley Swilling, 77 overall. He's ranked 16th in the draft. We took him at 52. Uh, he's a monster. Uh, 89 speed, 89 trucking. 86 Excel, 92 stiff arm, 87 carrying, 84 ball carry vision. This this player's unreal. So so good. 
How, how did he stay on the board for so long? It was, a, like, the number one ranked running back. He was supposed to go in the top three. All right, I'm going to make my first trade of the entire episode. And I'm going to try to trade the picks I have remaining for a decent receiver. I'm going to go ahead and trade three second-round picks this year for, I believe his name was uh, Demarius Sims of the Chiefs. And uh, he, he's a really good young player. So I figured, why not go ahead and make that trade? He's going to come in right away and be a big, big difference maker. Now I'm trading a third-round pick for Justin Tucker of the Ravens. Felt like we needed a really good kicker. We didn't even have one on the roster. We don't have a punter either. So I feel like I'm going to go out and trade for a punter. I have, let's do a fifth-round pick. Try to find one. Maybe Sam Cook is the move. Nah. A fourth-round pick is going to land me Marquette King. Good puncher. We're working on special teams. I think that improves our team. We didn't really need to do anything else with our picks, so I figured why not put in a trade for you guys in the episode. I didn't do a whole lot of scouting because I knew many of these players wouldn't be all that good for me. 4-2-6 speed out of Lehigh. I'll take someone who's that fast, unless there's someone down here who's faster, which uh, is unlikely. Abraham McClung. Here you go. He's pretty awful, but he's fast. All right, so I moved Devin Vallos over to defensive tackle where he is an 84 overall. He's he's going to start, I would say. All right, I'm not going to show you guys the team right now. I mean, you guys can see it. Here it is. But I'm just going to simulate to the regular season so that I get a little bit more XP so everyone can be in their right spot and then show you guys what it's going to look like for the actual regular season. I think it makes the most sense, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so this is the team. I changed some schemes around, so Derrick Henry's up to a 91 now. It's a good-looking team. I think better than when we got it, for sure. And a lot of young talent, so this is a team that can do very well over the long term. Check out all the rookies we drafted and how well they've, they've improved so far. But um, I think this team has what it takes. Let's go ahead and simulate all the way to the playoffs. And maybe I'll stop it around week 10, see how we're doing, do some upgrading before we make that final stretch towards the playoffs. So we are 7-3 and three right now. Currently well atop the AFC East, although things could very easily change. Not a whole ton of XP for anyone in particular, but it's not like it's not a lot. We're just going to go and hold off, not use any of it now. Use it at the end of the season, which we should very easily make the playoffs. I would say probably 11-5 uh, and five is our most likely record. But we are almost at the playoffs already. You guys want to know how I sim so fast. I do the cloud. I do it online. So with my connection, everything goes pretty quickly. And we, of course, finish 11-5. and five. We are in the wild card round of the playoffs. And uh, let's go ahead and see how we got there. Quarterback stats. What did Jimmy G do? 4,322 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, rushing. Derrick Henry, 13 touchdowns. Deion Lewis also had 13. However, Derrick Henry had 1,100 yards. Receiving, Demarius Sims. Six touchdowns on 97 catches for 912 yards. I see six catches. I think I said six touchdowns. 97 catches, 912 yards. Gronk, 78 catches, 900 yards, four touchdowns. Brandon Cook, 75 catches, 985 yards, and eight touchdowns. Julian Edelman, almost 800 yards and eight touchdowns. Blocking, a lot of sacks from Brian Wagner. Defensively, Willie Shields led our team in tackles with 147. Only player on our team to have over 100 tackles. Tackles were lost 11 from rookie Devin Vallos out of UCLA. Quarterback sacks 10.5 for Trey Flowers, 6.5 for Bowens, 5 for Vallos, 5 for Hightower, 4 for Calhoun. Interceptions 4 for Akeem to leave, 3 from the rookie strong safety out of Auburn, Jarek McKinnon, 2 from Willie Shields. Let's check out forced fumbles, 3 from Keldrick Hill. Fumble recoveries, we have 2 from Matt Farr. What about defensive touchdowns? Anybody? No. What about awards? Macon Banowitz wins MVP of the 12 and 4 Chargers at a 77 overall. Interesting. AJ McCarron of the Saints. What is going on here? Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Also, Macon Banowitz of the Chargers. Any Patriots? Yeah, Jimmy G at number 7. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Von Miller of the 79 Broncos. Willie Shields at number 3. Okay. Offensive Rookie of the Year, also, of course, Macon Banowitz. He pretty much does everything. Defensive Rookie of the Year. There, we got it. Jarek McKinnon, but look at the Dolphins just dominating in the draft. Who are the Dolphins? Devin Vallis at four, but the Dolphins. Oh, my God. This Dolphins team, they keep losing, but their rookies just perform so well. 
I really didn't expect to win Defensive Rookie of the Year with Jarek McKinnon. He has 32 KXP, so I'd say that's a pretty decent pick. Earl Thomas would have been more than plus 10 to what Devin McCourty brought. And then he would have been about the same overall as Devin McCourty for Jarek McKinnon. And now with this XP, he's going to be leaps and bounds better. Where Devin McCourty would probably be like an 80 overall right now, Jarek McKinnon will probably be, I don't know, in the neighborhood of an 85 probably. 87. I would say it was well worth it drafting him. Who is Tony Garcia and why am I just finding out about him? He's an 81 overall at 26 years old and he has 15 KXP. What? Nah, only at 83. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to upgrade the entire team all at once. Show you guys the overalls. Swilling is also up to an 84 overall running back, as you can see down there. I started him at fullback, though. So, kind of whatever. Offensive line is decent. I would say above average. Receiving core, I really like. Defensively, though, is really where we shine. McKinnon up to an 88. Dante Hightower has been playing with 90. Uh, been very close to that for the entire realistic rebuild. Far at 90. Shields at 90. Um, Bowen's at an 88. Defensive line's performing really well. Also, I think it is notable. I just realized when I said realistic rebuild right there, usually I'll use actual like NFL draft rookies for the 2018 season, 2019. And I completely forgot. So, my bad. We're going to go ahead and win the wild card round of the playoffs, though. I didn't even... I don't know what, what I was doing. But we're now going into the divisional against the 12-4 and four Jaguars. Can we beat them in advance to the conference championship? We do not. Losing 27-20. to 20. That is tough. I wish I would have used actual rookies coming up through the draft. But, um... Uh, I guess I didn't. It's kind of a slippery slope when I do that because, like, I'll draft the players and then I hate to show it afterwards and then, like, this is their development and their ratings. I promise I didn't change anything, which I obviously don't, but it's like, I don't know. I easily could. It's definitely an option. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, you know, the actual computer-generated rookies nonetheless. We have a bunch that played really well. But that's going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. Shit, don't run away.